Hello and welcome to this session on Contract Service Billing for InforSun Systems. Contract Service Billing, or CSB, is a module designed and developed by Professional Advantage. Professional Advantage are the largest global info development partner for Sun Systems modules and provide a number of different tools that work in and around the outside of Sun Systems to provide flexible and focused functionality where this may not be provided by Sun Systems itself to meet your organisational need. All Professional Advantage modules are absolutely integrated to the Sun Systems database and understand Sun Systems out of the box. They offer a consistent upgrade path when you move forward through different versions of Sun Systems over time. CSB is a sales invoice module. It allows and caters for the development and production of recurring and contract invoice batches, but also the capture and production of ad hoc and simple invoices. The system is flexible and works in sync with your business processes to remove manual tasks and increase data accuracy and speed up processing. Some of the main benefits of CSB include flexible invoice type configuration to meet your organisational requirements and offering a cost and effort reduction in the dispatch of invoices through the use of an email to send a PDF invoice to your customer upon generation. The system gives improved compliance and control over invoice approval with an approval harness allowing for notifications to be sent to the approver when an invoice needs to be actioned within the system. There is no need to implement the Sun Sales Invoicing module in the background to use CSB. This is because CSB works directly against the Sun System's financial ledger and can be deployed to any number of users with a concurrent user license. The system's recurring invoicing capability saves time and increases accuracy where you have a large burden of contract invoices. Some of the features of CSB include the ability to email invoices out to your customers and the ability to reprint and resend invoices at the click of a button. It has a powerful report writer for customization of invoice layouts and the ability to deal with price books, allowing for the automation of price changes on contracts and item types very quickly and at the touch of a button. The system has powerful calculation and condition codes that cater for complex pricing structures and invoice layouts. It has the ability to accrue prepayments and arrears into journals in some systems where needed, and it can also cater for revenue recognition and the spread of revenue over multiple periods for particular invoice types or items where this is part of your organisational requirement. CSB is very easy to use with simple screen functionality. Screen fields and references are adaptable and flexible menu types can be applied to different user groups. The system has a Windows look and feel, meaning that users like it and find it easy to use, and it can be deployed to any number of PCs or via Citrix or Terminal Server if this is your deployment methodology. CSB has comprehensive security, but also has deep integration to both Sun Systems and the ability to integrate to other modules. Users can be set up in groups and security can be applied to those groups, preventing the use of certain functionality or filtering data if this is a need. It offers seamless posting of journals directly to the Sun Systems ledger with all the required validation as you would expect from a professional advantage module working against Sun Systems. CSB integrates very well with the Sun Systems Collect data management module. From within Collect, you are able to drill back directly to a CSB invoice to see the detail or reprint it if needed. CSB can also generate a note directly into Collect against a customer when an invoice is generated. This makes seamless data management much more of a possibility when you are using CSB. The system allows for the import of batches of invoices from external systems where maybe they actually provide the batch of invoices and CSB is then responsible for the approval, dispatch and posting of those into the Sun Systems ledger. Of course, around all processing within CSB, a full audit history is retained and can be reported when needed. We're now going to have a look at some of the basic processes within CSB, but on the screen here we have a value proposition from one of our very happy clients who are already using the module. Within CSB, the screen is divided into a number of main areas. Across the tops, we have tabs for invoices, approvals and contracts. On the invoicing tab, we can see that there is a hierarchy tree. And if I expand that tree, you're able to see invoices that are held at various statuses within the system. 
For example, if I expand the held status, we can see invoices of various different types. I have a number of types set up within my system. If I expand the INV type, you can see invoices that currently sit at that status. These invoices could be released and move forward through the process until they are finally posted within Sun Systems. Each of these invoices also appear on the main screen of the system. This is a grid that is common throughout CSB and allows users to simply and easily find information. For example, on my held invoice status, I am able to sort by invoice type or ID, etc. just by clicking on the header of the documents. I am also able to move these columns around if the user requires them to be in a different area. I can use the grouping functionality to group by invoice date, maybe by invoice type, etc., giving you easy access to the information. To create a new invoice within the system, all I need to do is go to the top toolbar and click New. This will then bring up a main screen where I enter the details of my invoice. You can see on here that a new invoice ID is applied and also that the status is naturally held. First of all, I'm going to choose an invoice type, and these invoice types can be set up within the system, and they can be as many as you require. I'm going to raise a simple INV invoice. Once I've chosen the invoice type, I then go and fill in the customer details from a drop-down derived directly from Sun Systems. If you add a new account into Sun Systems, it would automatically appear in this list due to the integration between CSB and Sun Systems. We can fill in a header, description on the invoice, and also the date of the invoice from a date picker. The system works with Sun Systems multi-currency and allows the full use of multi-currency conversion for your invoices to the base currency of your business unit when they are posted. I have defaulted my IMV invoice type to use the GBP currency. However, you could choose to raise an invoice in any currency that exists within Sun Systems. On the header of the invoice, the invoice address code for that customer has been derived directly from Sun, along with the contact information for the customer. We are also able to fill in different delivery addresses if this is appropriate. On the header of the invoice, we can capture transaction analysis or ledger analysis from within Sun Systems. Here you can see I am showing a number of the analysis codes set up for me within Sun. We can default these codes based on the invoice type or the user group or the customer. Although at runtime, the user could also choose from any of the analysis codes that exist within Sun Systems. This also is a real-time feed and will be updated with any new codes that were created within Sun Systems. On the header, we also have the ability to capture up to 10 invoice references, although we do not have to display them. As you can see, I've removed invoice reference 4. They can be renamed to indicate something related to your organisation. On the header of an invoice, we can also capture internal notes. This allows notes to be passed on to approvers for audit trail purposes. I will add note 1. When we save the note, it is actually date time stamped and a user is applied so that all history within the system can be examined and understood fully. You can add as many notes as you like. Additionally, on the invoice header, we can attach extra email attachments. These can be then dispatched and sent out to the customer along with the invoice document. For example, if you have a contract or a quotation or some other document that needs to be sent out, if you attach it here, that will also be included when the invoice is dispatched. On the header of the document, I have now filled in all my detail as required, so I'm going to move on to entering some items on my invoice. On the item area, we can go and fill in an item code from a list of items that have been defined within the system. Items can have unit costs, associated counts and other complexities associated to them if needed. I'm going to enter a very simple once-off item. For this item, you can see the sales account from Sun Systems has been defaulted along with the revenue recognition account since this item is set up to use revenue recognition. When I hit the drop down here, I can see a list of all the revenue accounts that exist within Sun. I can fill in a description and an extended description, and these can be passed into Sun Systems, but also used on the invoice document when it is produced. The user can enter a quantity, and we can also alter the unit price, etc., if needed. On the system, we can also see that it's defaulted our tax analysis code, and this will drive the tax calculation based on the analysis held within Sun Systems for tax. My simple invoice type has net, tax and gross as the only calculation codes, although you can have as many calculation codes as you wish on an invoice, up to 10. I'm going to save this item code. 
and that will now have created my first line on the invoice. I can see that on the grid display if I wish. I could also go and create items from the grid display if I prefer to do that rather than using the form. On an invoice item we can also have different delivery addresses from that held on the header and we can add an extra 10 analysis codes if that's important. We also have the ability to add 10 item references on each line. You can see I've only used two and set them up to be commissionable sales and commission rate. These could be included as part of my calculation codes if that is something I wanted to do. Now I've saved my invoice, I'm going to release it and move it on through the system. To do this I right click on it in the tree and say release selected invoice. Once I have released the invoice, it has now moved on either to a status whereby I can print it and post it, or if I'm using approvals, it would now be waiting approval. I do have approval set up, and therefore this is the case. If I imagine I've now received a notification as an approver via email saying I have an invoice to approve, I could come and log into the system if this was my role, and go to the approvals area. Under the awaiting approval status, we can go and see that I have a number of set up for the IMV type, and 1250, the invoice I just raised, is actually one of these. You can see that the status is awaiting approval. As an approver, I'm able to right click on it and actually approve, reject or return the invoice. I could actually print a pro forma at this stage if I wanted to. I'm going to approve the invoice. Now the invoice has been approved, it has moved back into the invoicing area under released and ready to move on to the next step. You can see it's now appearing under released INV 1252. If I right click on the invoice, I now have the option to post it into Sun Systems or print it if I wanted to. I'm going to post it into Sun Systems. This invoice has now been posted, a journal has been generated, and the journal number is returned from Sun Systems onto the screen. CSB can do this because it is very deeply integrated to Sun Systems and all journals are posted on a real time basis. Once I've posted the invoice, it will now move on to the status of posted and you can see that the actual invoice number has been applied. The invoice number is flexible, can be set up for different databases and user groups and can have a three character alpha starting point to differentiate between invoice types or databases if this is something you require in your organisation. In order to print this invoice, I could do it from the right click menu or it could have automatically been printed and dispatched by email at the point of posting. If I wanted to, I can actually do these sort of things via a batch process. From the top menu, if I go into invoices, you can see that I can do batches of multiple approvals, multiple postings and multiple printings if needed. If I go into the print invoices function here, I'm presented with a selection screen where I can go and choose what I want to actually view and which, what invoices I wish to deal with. In this case, I could choose by customer, by contract invoice or invoice type details such as those on the screen here. If I return a search for all invoices, the grid will then show me a list of invoices that meet my search criteria. Within this grid, in the same way as the grid on the front screen, I can move things around, I can group by any of these columns, and I can also apply filters from the drop-down that allow me to find different information based on what's within that column. You can also apply custom filters such as these. If I go and find the invoice that I've just generated, this invoice will then be available and I will be able to generate a printed document from the invoice. If I scroll down, you should find that I do actually have that invoice somewhere within my list. I'll sort by invoice ID and I can see 1252 is sitting here. If I actually preview the invoice on screen, this will show me a document. In this case, we are looking at a template that is delivered with CSB during the implementation. However, for most organizations, we would actually customize this to meet the requirement. You can have your own logos and your own layout and they can be different for different invoice types, different databases and different user groups. These documents can be printed, they can be exported to Excel and Word and PDF from here if required. I can also redistribute that to the customer using the buttons at the bottom of the screen or email it to someone internally if that is something I wish to do, maybe as a copy or a pro forma. I'm going to close this grid. I've now run through a simple invoice generation and production within CSB. The other area we should look at within the system in this brief demo is the contract area. If I go into the contracts tab, we can see here that I can set up as many contracts as I wish against a particular customer. In this case, you can see that I have a number of contracts for European guidance systems, a number for Airways International. If I look at one of these contracts, right click 
and open the selected contract, you can see that the data on the screen is very similar to the data that we saw on a standard invoice. The main difference is, is that once we've created our invoice type and our customer, we're then adding multiple item lines to the invoice that we wish to be billed on a cyclic basis. Over on the right hand side of the screen we can see that you can set up a number of different invoicing frequencies. These range between weekly, daily, monthly, annual, quarterly etc. as required. We cater for most requirements and enhancements can be applied to bring in new invoicing frequencies as part of an implementation. We can set up a review date on an invoice contract in order that the system will remind us when a contract is approaching review and it needs to be set up or complied to in some way. When I'm ready to generate a contract invoice, all I need to do is actually generate a batch of contracts based on some criteria. So from the top menu, I can go and say generate contract invoices and choose which contracts I wish to generate based on either the date of the actual invoices, the frequency of the invoices. So for example, here I could say to generate all my fortnightly contracts or weekly contracts, etc. Or maybe I can choose on a more detailed basis by things such as contract ID or invoice type, etc. You can choose the date of the contract generation, and this will be the date at which the invoices are posted. The system can work out the last time a contract was generated and see if there are any invoices that need to be generated between that date and the current date you have chosen for generating invoices as at. Any invoices that are missing will be generated and created and posted into the held area where you can then actually approve them, generate the documents and post them into Sun as a batch. Contract invoicing within CSB is very powerful and caters for most recurring invoicing needs. This is a basic overview of CSB and I hope you found this functionality of interest. Thank you for your interest in contract service billing for InfoSun systems. Should you require any further information, please feel free to contact Professional Advantage or visit our website at www.professionaladvantage.co.uk.